Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Mirror Neuron which means watch and learn and today I'm going to share with you that why uh, many machine learning projects fails and today I'm going to give you a complete scenario that what actually happens uh, in the backstage uh, of the industry or in a company. So first I'll explain you a particular problem statement and just by listening to the problem statement uh, you will definitely think that it's actually a machine learning project but over the time as I keep explaining the different scenarios eventually you will come to know uh, wh what exactly is machine learning project or what exactly is not a machine learning project okay so let's begin so uh, in a finance industry there is something called as control that is built uh, in order to keep check of uh, the 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 status of certain activity now what are these activities I'll come back to this page again so for example one of the activities that suppose you are a customer of a particular say bank right say you're a particular you're a customer of a certain bank and you say uh, you know resided at in particular location in the world right this is your earth and say so you're particularly currently say staying here just an example so your bank knows that where exactly you stay and they send you uh, communication details your transaction uh, statement and so on and everything right later say in that year in a particular year say you move to a different location here right but what happened is your bank was not updated about this movement you know they don't know that you actually moved from this location to this location right so what happens is uh, many a times the statement will be sent to your old address but it will be either returned or it will not be received by somebody and over the time your bank will come to know that you have moved to a different location or maybe you might have reached out to the bank directly saying that you are no longer getting the statements and other reports etc and so you are supposed to you know the bank is supposed to send you the details to that new location now in order to check whether a customer has moved from one location to another or not a particular control is built control is nothing but a conditional statement uh, which is run across your database to see whether you have moved from a location or not now that is one control right another control could be that suppose you have taken some uh, personal loan from your bank right you have taken some loan from your bank and say it was at the interest rate of 10 percent right now the government has changed and they have what they have did is they have reduced the interest rate to say nine percent now what happened was say for example uh, for some reason uh, this new interest rate was not applied to your account rather it was only applied to say new customers but but the government said that even existing customer should have get, should get this new benefit right but for some reason the bank was giving this benefit only to say new customer so what do you do in that case so another control needs to be in place because if this interest rate is not or this benefit is not given to a customer then what happens is they lose that you know trust of customer and then eventually this customer might take out its loan and move to another bank and that as a result the bank will lose another customer right so that's why it's important for bank to make sure that no such thing happens the customer should be always happy so that so we might build another control uh, for this to check this scenario whether everybody got the benefit or not so now you can as you can see now a, in a bank there are different you know permutation and combination of problem statement that somebody might face so one could be you know you might have a uh, say student's account and uh, there are some overdraft facility right where if you go beyond a certain limit a percentage of that will be chargeable now what happens is say for a student say it should be five percent just example and for 
people who are already working, say for them it might be 7%. But maybe for some reason the students are also being charged 7%, which is higher, and it could be a bit challenging for a student to pay a higher interest rate, and also it might not be possible for them uh, to get this 5% because of some problem within the system or somehow the account was set up in certain way, many things could happen. So for that, say, you are building another control just to check that kind of uh, issues uh, should not occur. Now, in a bank, uh, you know, there could be thousands and thousands of such controls which keeps running every day or weekly or monthly just to make sure that all these processes are in place, right? Okay. Now, this is the scenario, okay? Now, what happens is, you know, say, uh, say we have uh, around 10,000 controls, right? and they're all doing very important checks in the data and you can imagine uh, ex banks could have say few 45 to 50 million customers right and there are a lot of transactions so there could be a lot of transaction related controls there could be a lot of address mismatch related controls there could be so many interest rate related controls so you can imagine even though it's 10,000 controls but there are so much of data right so what are the problems that one can get into? So first of all, let's classify these 10,000 controls in a bigger bucket. Say for example, uh, so there are 4,000 controls, okay, which runs, say probably weekly, okay. So, so there are 4,000 another controls which runs daily, right, and there are say 2,000 controls which runs, say, monthly, okay. Now what happens is because as we saw that so much of data could be could have been there right so much of data times 10,000 right so much data would be there so probably this daily controls does not run properly every day and it could fail for several reason now the several reasons could be a could be performance issue you know the the, the query has been written in such a uh, you know, uh, resource resource dependent or exhaustive way that it might fail for that reason. Second reason could be uh, it might run out of, it might be doing some calculation and it ran out of RAM, for example. Uh, for example, maybe it is depend on some on some other jobs, so there could be dependency issues and so on. So just imagine there can be many reasons why a particular control, now that you understand what a control is, might not run on that particular day and it might fail. Okay, so now that we understand, you know, the problem statement and what's going on in the back end, let me give you a real scenario. Um, so for example, all those, all those uh, transactions and uh, say for example, all those, uh, you know, uh, the activities that a particular customer does within a bank, say for example, all those data are stored in a, in a MongoDB tables or documents, right? And there are portals built which MongoDB directly feeds uh, the UI and people can see which controls are running, whether they have refreshed or not refreshed. When I, what I mean by that is whether they have run that particular day or not, whether they have created exceptions or not. So what is meant by exception is uh, whether, uh, you know, that student account, whether, you know, if, if they are supposed to charge 5% but they are charging 7%, then this is a issue and, and a flag should be raised for that, right? So that is what is meant by exceptions in many uh, finance institute. Okay, now this is feeding the live portal. Okay, so I'll just put it term live here. What happens is in many banks, they will also have some backup databases where the daily data or, you know, every hourly data are being moved from one database to another database. And say in this case, we are putting uh, the backup data or write back data uh, into the Teradata tables, okay? Which then can be eventually utilized for deeper analysis and so on. Now, a problem, one of the problem statements say we were facing is why, you know, can we predict when a particular control will fail 
you know that is of very much importance because if a control is about to fail that means we are not going to find this kind of issues and as a result what will happen is there will be gruntled disgruntled customers and you know they might leave the bank you know people take a decisions right very fast and what will happen we'll run into problems we'll lose customer and so on so one of the activity that we were supposed to do is predict when when a control is going to fail right so that's a prediction so what happened was it obviously seems like a predictive model because whenever we think about when it is going to fail it's kind of a prediction that we are trying to calculate here so let's look into the problem in a much deeper way okay so what are the problems do we face when a particular thing uh, fails and what are its implications which I've already explained now the point comes that how can we predict right so the idea was you know let's keep a check of at what particular time at what particular time the control is supposed to run okay so if it is a daily control say it runs at 7 a.m. and if a particular day it did not run or it failed so let's find why it failed right but what particular time did it fail so probably say it started running but at around 7 30 a.m. it failed and that was the first failure say in that particular day and the second the next day say it again failed and say this time it failed around say 7 30 a.m. again okay and so on right and so you see we started getting some data and we also have the time at what time it is failing and say on the third day we saw it ran uh, till one hour and then it failed at around 8 a.m. now you also need to understand that not every control will have that large volume of data and also not every control will run say in one minute so some controls will run for one minute some will run for five minutes and some will run for say 100 minutes and so on right okay so we have started collecting the data and our main task is based on this data when a control will fail is what we are supposed to predict okay so this is what we have been doing so what we have observed is out of 10,000 about 40% controls fail every day now imagine the amount of impact it brings on the system on the business and so on so it becomes of utmost importance to solve this particular uh, problem statement so as a result 50,000 dollar was allotted to hire a machine learning engineer and solve this particular problem okay and as I have shown you this particular type of data was collected so that the machine learning engineer can come and utilize that data to predict when it will fail when the problem or when the control will fail so if we know when it is going to fail then we can take a step uh, in order to fix that problem okay now now the interesting things shows up so in the job portal a job was created okay for a machine learning engineer for a contract role and the project was um, six months okay so basically if somebody will make about nine thousand dollar a month uh, in order to solve the problem quite a lucrative job isn't it right it's almost 100k package and uh, that sub problem is supposed to solve and that's where the interview started and you know people were being called into office uh, you know and have we been doing face to face uh, interviews and so on and everything was uh, you know set up so that somebody can come and solve this problem now in parallel what happened now this is why I'm going to focus on why machine learning projects fails because nobody took the time to actually understand the problem statement and by not changing that when 
it is going to fail if somebody could have thought about why it is failing I think should have fixed the problem and now let me tell you how we actually tried to solve it what we did first of all out of 10,000 controls that we know 4,000 were the problems were mainly 4,000 daily controls somewhere 4,000 weekly and 2,000 monthly so a fraction of all these controls were failing so what we started doing is we grouped this 10,000 not by daily, month, weekly and monthly rather we started grouping these 10,000 controls by product type okay so we have mortgage we have vehicle loan right we have personal banking right and so on we started grouping them and we started allotting the controls each and every place okay and we started bringing the technical leads for each of these groups okay and this is the data that we have started populating so we have the control ID because every control has a ID okay and then we said okay at what particular time it is going to run so we collected the job timing okay then we said is it supposed to run daily or is it supposed to run on weekends or is it supposed to run weekly monthly what is the pattern so we started creating certain pattern and because the leads are already familiar with the pattern they were able to tell us then we asked them to find out the reason why it failed okay and few other things that we started collecting now here is the interesting part and the interesting part is the reason why it failed when we started looking at the reason why it failed we saw the majority reason was one bad syntax or you can say bad coding practice is why it failed for many reason two file dependency many of the tech leads what they did they have set up their jobs in such a way that they depended on certain files and those files were being sent manually that's a bad thing and third reason was even though the codes were running but they have performance issue and the fourth reason was that even though the job timing was fixed but there are triggers written which sometimes did not work and guess what just by this four thing by fixing these four issues you know we not only saved fifty thousand dollars but this problem was solved in seven days there was no machine learning used only some exploratory data analysis and by simple question, changing the type of question right going from when it is going to fail and if we just ask why it has failed the problem the project has converted from machine learning to exploratory data analysis and as a result the job portal you know this entire was taken down and that is what happens in majority of the time people start with thinking that it's a machine learning project and they have to invest so much money to solve a particular problem and then that, that is why you know eventually what happens they post a machine learning job but then eventually they don't hire people and that's a bad thing and you can see in most of the job portals around 70 percent of uh, job posts do not get filled with resources because of this reason because they eventually realize that it's not a machine learning problem rather it's an exploratory data analysis I'll put some links of this EDA in my description section so that you can also learn how to do it yourself how to crack these problems in a certain different way instead of going through the machine learning approach and 
it's a very important skills even though you get into machine learning or not but this EDA will always help you in any industry any job any business okay so I hope you got something new today to learn and I hope this will give you a new thought process so that you can prepare yourself better all right you take care and I hope you have learned something new today